it's Julia and welcome back to my channel and for today's video I'm going to be doing a video that I've been meaning to do for quite some time now. This is going to be my Tarot 101 video. I've talked about in the past about making this video and you guys seemed really interested in it. Basically I'm going to be talking about my personal experience with Tarot and how I like to do things. I'm not an expert so don't come at me. We don't want that here. I have been doing tarot for maybe about two years now, so I've kind of got the hang of how I like to personally do my readings. So yeah, we're gonna talk about that today and like what tarot is and what it means and stuff like that. I do have a whole witchy playlist of these kind of videos on my channel if you're interested in more of them. They, I have some videos about my crystals, about my tarot card collection, because I do have more than one deck. And yeah, all things witchy about my personal experience starting um, my kind of spiritual journey, but yes, today is just talking about tarot. Another quick disclaimer that I want to mention is tarot is not like how it's presented in films, so it is not the card is going to tell me what day I'm going to die or when your boyfriend's going to break up with you or when you're going to dump this person. That's not what a tarot card reading is. The first thing getting into tarot is picking a deck, and a lot of people have the view that you know, your first deck should be gifted to you because it's better luck that way. Some people hold that view that some you should, someone else should buy you your first deck and that it's bad luck to buy your own, but some people don't care and will buy their own. I personally say, do whatever you want. I was gifted my first deck, technically, but I picked it out, <laughs> which I think is a good way to do it. I don't think it's bad luck if you buy your own deck. I think it's good because if you picked it yourself and you feel drawn to it because if you're gifted a deck that you didn't really see then you might not feel drawn to it and that's another thing when you're picking your deck you have to feel a somewhat pull to it if that's the art of the cards or just the way they look or anything like that or if you just see it and like feel like that's the deck I want get it because that's the deck <laughs> that you're gonna really enjoy using. Standard tarot deck consists of 78 cards it is divided into the Major Arcana and the Minor Arcana. The major one consists of 22 cards and the Minor one consists of 56 cards. So the Major Arcana is more of like the world, the lovers, and those cards that you see. The Hermit, things like that. So the Minor Arcana is split into four categories. The Wands, the Cups, the Swords, and the Pentacles. Those four categories go from Ace to Ten and then also include King, Queen, Prince, Princess, Prince, Knight, but you know. Different cards say different things, so it can really depend on the deck that you buy in terms of that, but that usually is the structure of a tarot deck. So I'm going to be using the example of this deck in my videos. This is the Mystic Mondays Tarot one. If you're wondering where I got it, you can get tarot decks from Amazon. You can get them from metaphysical stores in your area. You can get them from, I think even Urban Outfitters sells them now. You can get them from a lot of places. I got this one from the Strand Bookstore in New York City. So the reason I picked this one up is because I've been wanting it for so long, but I didn't want to spend the money on it because they can get pricey and I didn't want to spend the money on a, the deck right now because but I love the art because of how modern and like abstract it kind of was if that makes sense I loved that about this deck so that's the reason why I really wanted it and it's really shiny and beautiful but so when I was on a trip I made sure to get this which was like amazing so I'm gonna be showing you guys some of the spreads that I like to do. So also to mention, most tarot cards come with a little guidebook that has what all the cards mean. So it has what they mean, the actual message of them. So if one card, this one, I flipped to five of pentacles. So this one is about abandonment, misfortune, and loss. And I'll kind of talk more about that on the page. And some of them also do if they're inversed. So some people, when they shuffle their, their decks, they don't care if the cards get flipped over or if they get turned around or whatever. I'm really picky, I don't do my cards the other way. I don't really read in verse. I just don't like to. And my cards are always the straight, like the right way forward because I'm weird. But so you don't have to do that, but you can. So when it's flipped, the card means the exact opposite. And that's usually told to you in the guidebook that it comes with. And if not, there's tons of information online and tons of videos online. So this deck specifically comes with, I will show you this one. I talked about it in my video, but it is stunning. I love this deck so much. So a few of the comments spreads that I do are the one card a day. So I will show you guys how I like do that. But basically this will be your card of the day and you can either use this to, to symbolize how your day is gonna go or you can do it at the end of the day and then reflect back on your day and see how that card was applied to your life somehow. So even if the card was more about money and like financial struggle, you could kind of see 
maybe at some point in that day you had some budgeting issues or you spent you did go out and spend some money and then it kind of causes you to reflect on like your financial issues if that's what the card kind of represents or not even if it's you but if you met up with a friend who has like an issue like that and you get that card later in the day then you can kind of reflect on that and kind of link it to the other person too. So this tarot is really up to interpretation and relating it to your personal life and making you grow as a person. So it's not telling you this is gonna happen when, but it could say there's going to be some obstacles soon. There could be stuff like that that is said and you can prepare for that or do some more self-care around that time and stuff like that. And you don't even have to fully, fully believe in tarot cards to like start using them. You could start whenever and I believe in these cards but I don't rely on them for all my decisions. Like I don't want people to think that you know if you have a tarot deck and you're making a big life decision you can just you know like the card is going to tell you yes or no like this is not a magic eight ball like no you can use these to help you make decisions in life and help aid you going forward and help you towards your goals three card spread is one that i do a lot i do it on my instagram if you don't follow me there you can i do tarot readings and tarot spreads and stuff on there but the three card a day basically discuss basically it could be split into past present future and mind body spirit so you draw the three cards and they would resemble those things and then you would kind of reflect from there and do your reading from there basically how you do a standard reading take out your deck you can light some candles you can put some crystals around your deck you could do so many things you can light salt lamps you can burn incense you could light sage you could do whatever you feel is necessary some people like to put down a cloth or something along the lines just to like kind of protect their deck and to kind of have that dedicated space for their deck. So then you would shuffle the cards and then while you shuffle the cards you would think of your day or your life or something that you specifically want to reflect on in your tarot reading. So if that's you want to reflect on how your relationships are then you would think about kind of all the friendships and the relationships that you have and think about that while you shuffle the deck. I tend to split my cards into three piles. You try to make them equal. Mine are usually not but you split them into three piles and then you put them back into one any way that you would kind of like to. Um, doesn't have to be the way you separated them, just do whatever feels right. Then a lot of people do this step differently, so this is not the way you exactly have to do it, it's just the way I do it, but you could, I lay out my cards like a fan and I try to spread them out as much as possible and then the ones that I feel that the ones that are sticking out of that little fan or the ones that I kind of just am staring at that I feel like I need to pick up, I pick up those, put them to the side, put the three that I need to the side, and then I will flip them over. So if I was doing mind, body, spirit, I would flip the three cards over that I got. And then when you first start, you look into the guidebook or you can look on the internet for what those cards mean and reflect on how that could be related to your life or how you can improve on something in your life or how you're doing something successful in your life by what one of the cards represents. You don't have to memorize them. And I think that's a big intimidating thing is when you see people do readings that are, you know, professionals, they know all of the card meanings and it's a lot. There's a lot of cards and there's a lot of meanings for them and a lot of ways you can interpret them. So you do not have to memorize them. You could start to learn. I still have not memorized my cards and I've been doing it for a while and I have not memorized my cards. There's a lot of cards that I see and I'm like, yeah, I know what that means because I have seen it a lot or I've gotten that card a lot. So I kind of know what that means. But most of the time I still look them up just to double check. Um, especially when I'm doing it for myself, it's easier that way. Like I'd rather just double check and then sometimes I'll write the notes about my tarot reading in a notebook or something like that. And then when you're done, you could put the deck back. Some people like to blow on their deck. Some people like to burn out their candles afterwards and put away their stuff when they're done. Or a lot of people just like to say thank you to their deck. So that could be in any way you want to do that. So you could literally say thank you or blow on the deck or say thank you in your head. It doesn't matter. Do what you want. That is my little guide to tarot and just the basics of what the cards kind of are, what the cards can like do for you as a person. And yeah, that's how I personally do my readings. Some people do them quite differently. I'll link a few videos down below on other people discussing tarot so that you could, you know, do your research, get a wide range of opinions and topics about this stuff. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, like and comment down below. I would love to hear from you and you can follow me on any of my social medias, including Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, anything like that. Or you can check out more of my witchy videos that will be in the description box. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you super soon. Bye. Uh,